If you look at this title, you might think we're going to demonstrate a basic fabric path configuration. Guess what? You're right. By the time you're done with this nugget, you will understand how to configure the basics of fabric path on NXOS devices. So to demonstrate our fabric path configuration today, I decided on Cisco's Viral. Notice that I've placed a NXOS virtualized operating system here and here and connected them with three links. This Nexus OS image inside of Viral kind of emulates what we would see on a Nexus 7K or 5K system. So here on Nexus 1, I will go in and let's just verify some stuff first, actually. This is what I pre-configured, very little. I just went to the three interfaces in a range, of course, and I configured them to be switch ports and to be in trunking mode. So I'll do show run interface ethernet two slash one to show you one of their configs, switch port, then switch port mode trunk, then no shot. I did that on both sides, so we should have trunk links. If I do a show interface trunk, we see we are trunking across those links. Great. I also created two VLANs. If we do a VLAN show VLAN brief, we will see that we have VLAN 100 and 200 between these devices. All right, let's go for a fabric path configuration that's going to replace the spanning tree that exists between these devices. And let's take a quick look at that. For one of the VLANs, for example, we can see we just happen to be on the root device and that all of our ports are designated. We're running rapid spanning tree protocol by default. Now here in Viral, I have to make sure from a licensing perspective that they're going to give me a grace period in order to run the Fabric Path feature set. So then we're gonna install the feature set of Fabric Path and that's great. So this Fabric Path feature set is installing and this is because of the grace period that we enabled. All right, we need to now tell this device that it can run the feature set of Fabric Path. So there we go. Turn off my caps lock. So now we've installed that Fabric Path feature set. The next thing that we're going to be doing once it fully installs is we're going to be going into our VLANs. So that was VLAN 100 and 200, and we're going to set their mode to Fabric Path VLANs. I'm then going to go into our interfaces two slash one all the way to two slash three. And I'm going to say switch port mode is now fabric path. Let's try our show spanning tree command again. And wow, things are quiet, but things have definitely changed. Spanning tree does not exist now on this device for any of the VLANs. Wow. Well, let's do this. Let's go over to NX2 and let's make the same configurations. First up, we need to make sure that we have the correct license feature of a grace period. Then we're going to install the feature set for Fabric Path. It's already installed on this device. Great. Let's make sure that the feature set is enabled, though, with feature set Fabric Path. And it looks like it wasn't because that's taking a moment. Great. Now let's go in just as we did on NX1 and attack our VLANs. So we'll do VLAN 100 and 200 and the mode is going to be fabric path. Now our interfaces 2 slash 1 through 3 and those are going to be switch port mode fabric path. We'll end the configuration. That config change actually caused my connection to heat up. So let's, now that we're back, let's go in and actually we're just ready to verify stuff, aren't we? So let's do a show spanning tree on this device for one of our VLANs. How about VLAN 100? Sure enough, now spanning tree does not exist on NX2 either. How about show fabric path? route as a way to confirm that not only is spanning tree gone, but fabric path has replaced it and is building an ISIS topology for the link movement of frames and nothing is blocked. 
This demonstration also hammers home to us that even though ISIS is the underlying routing technology, we are shielded from its configuration. The fabric path does an auto configuration of the underlying ISIS. We can go in and tweak and manipulate things to fine tune, but by default, it's something that is configuration free. I don't know about you, but it is at this point in our journey that I'm starting to feel really sad and really nostalgic about Spanning Tree Protocol. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.